Greetings, folks! The Nan here. The Nether. Minecraft's own little underworld. I think uh, this place really lets the creators of the game flex their creative muscles, as uh, it's not really bound to any rules of reality unlike the overworld. Now this completely imaginary dimension comes with its own odd batch of mobs. The thing is, all of us have been playing the game for so long that I think we tend to forget how weird the nether's mobs actually are. So today we try and give one of the weirder mobs of the nether some new family members. The ghost is horrifying in concept. It's a massive ghost octopus thing that flies around, is immune to lava, and when it spots you, it uses its mouth like a cannon and launches fiery explosive projectiles at you. It sucks. But as scary as they are, there's nothing really like them in the game. They're very unique. So today, I will try and create for you three new species of the ghast. Starting with the ghouls. Now I picture the ghouls to be smaller creatures. Well, smaller compared to the ghast, they'll still be basically the size of the player. What these guys do is they live on the nether roof. A few of them will spawn in small packs of four to five, and they'll hang off the nether roof. I like to think that these creatures aren't quite as powerful as the normal ghast, so they cannot really generate fireballs, but they still will spit fire at you like a blaze. So, gameplay-wise, what's the point of this annoying little pest-like creature? Well, they have a very, very rare drop. Ghoul Hide. Now, Ghoul Hide is kind of cool. It's extremely rare, like less than 1% chance of it dropping. But what it lets you craft is absolutely incredible. With Ghoul's Hide, you will be able to craft the Ghoul Set. That allows you to swim through lava. The thing is, each piece of the armor will give you more and more immunity. The more armor you put on, the less damage you take. Basically, each piece of additional armor slows down how fast the lava kills you. And once you have a complete set, then you can practically swim through lava. It gives about as much protection as iron armor, so I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's more specialized, like the turtle element or the elytra. There are also two ways to kill a ghoul. One, you can just like pile up to them using blocks, or you can shoot them with an arrow which makes them float down, because they can't quite fly like the gas, but they can float. So once they're down, you can kill them with a the sword. Mob number two will be absolutely insane. In my version of the game, Nether fortresses will have a chance of spawning with an additional structure. It will be a large dome-like structure called the Walt. Now here's the thing. I think... I've, this is... I'm going off script here, but comment down below if, if you know of any parkour challenges that actually exist in the game at this point. Because this is going to be a parkour challenge and I don't... I can't remember if there's any in the game right now. Any like structures that make you do parkour. So just let me down in the comments below, please. Also subscribe. Do it. The vault makes you jump across little bits of nether brick in order to get to the center chest. The center chest will probably contain some of the most precious loot you've ever seen in your life. In every single vault, there is a guaranteed one whole netherite ingot. No little scraps, no little nuggets, one full netherite ingot. But getting to this ingot is super difficult. Because underneath the parkour is a giant pool of lava. And inside the lava is a terrible creature left there by the fortress's creators. The fortress beast is a massive animal, four times the size of a ghast. It has only one job, to stop you from getting to the netherite. What the fortress beast does is it shoots fire at you as you're trying to do the parkour. Also, now and then it will shoot out one of its giant tentacles to try and knock you off and into the lava. Also, the chest in the middle will be covered by bars, and there will be a door, and the only way to open the door will be to activate some sort of switch that you have to do mid-parkour. But you don't know where that switch is, so you have to do the parkour. This is something that I've put in in order to prevent players from just ender pearling through the chest, getting the netherite, and getting out of there. You have to do the challenge if you want the piece of netherite. You could teleport to the bars, 
But the thing is, they take quite a while to break. And if the creature sees you breaking the bars, it will shoot out a massive blast of lava to just completely annihilate you. I think what keeps this high risk, high reward sort of a... Uh, sort of challenge balanced in the game is that it's optional. You don't have to do it. You could even encounter a fortress with with the vault in it, but you, you could just choose not to do it until you have better gear, unless you have something that to cheese the challenge with, I don't know. You don't, you're not forced to do this. But I think it's exciting anyways, because you know, it's a fun and exciting side quest. The third mob is by far the most interesting creature as it has some traits that you'd never associate with a ghast. Intelligence. I'd like if you tried and imagine this. A different species of the ghast that evolved, no longer being a giant monster that floats through the air, it gained a sort of human understanding of the world around it. Over its generations it shrank and became the size of a human, but its brain grew more and more, and at present time, this species became smart enough to almost communicate with us. Say hello to the Ghast Sapien. The Ghast Sapiens are clever little critters. You will find these guys around bastions, but not too close to them, because they and piglins are not really friends. What happens sometimes is you'll see Ghast Sapiens swoop over the bastions and quickly rummage through the piglins' chests, which they're not a fan of. After looking through the chests, the sapiens will fly away as the piglins shoot at them. This doesn't really add any features, but this behavior just adds a bunch of life to the game. Just gives you a feeling of there's, there's stuff around you, there's culture, and there's uh, just happenings that you're not aware of. But there is a way that you can interact with the sapiens. If you track a sapien down in the wild, you can give it one of the items that you got from a piglin. You don't have to get it from a piglin specifically, but just one of the items that a piglin may give you. And if you gift that item to the sapien, it will give you back a number of gold ingots that are in proportion to the value of that item. The way I picture this is that the sapiens have been learning from the piglins and they've been learning from the people that traded with the piglins. And even though they don't really have a civilization of their own, they do realize that the items that piglins trade do have some sort of value. And they also know that gold has value. So despite not understanding the worth of gold or the items that you're giving them, they do realize that there's some meaning behind the exchange of such things. And so they mimic the behavior anyways, just to see if one day they'll truly understand what it means. Also, here's a little feature. Sometimes you'll spot little baby sapiens with two other adult sapiens just flying around each other. This adds nothing to the game except a little bit of heart. I don't know man, I just had this picture of these completely alien creatures exhibiting what are extremely human feelings and that just makes everyone feel nice. So yeah. These have been my suggestions for how I would add more ghast type creatures to the game. I hope you enjoyed the video and the thing is, this is the part of the video by the way where I just speak freely to you guys. So stick around if you kind of enjoy the kind of person I am because the mob stuff is done. So basically, I did a ghast video because uh, I want to do some more mob videos because the mythology thing that's fun, that's gonna be fun always, but the thing is I kind of like doing this too. Minecraft mobs and sort of working out of, out of the box, inside the box. It's, it's cool, man. I just love this kind of video. So on that note, guys, I hope you've liked. I hope you've commented. And I hope you've subscribed. And for now, a goodbye.